Uh, so my name is uh, Nicolas Henrier. I'm working at uh, Sensata as an RF engineer. Um <coughs> this presentation will show you few features, few examples uh, on what we have done with the AWO microwave office in for simulations. So the product is tire pressure monitoring system. Our sensors are well known under the the Shredder trademark, in fact, so Shredder is a Sensata company actually. So it could be maybe useful to tell you a few words on what is TPMS uh, sensor, so it's tire pressure monitoring system. It's actually four sensors fit in, uh, fitted on each wheels of your car. So the sensors are able to measure the pressure and send it to a receiver and the receiver communicates the information to the dashboard and it can show to the drivers some signs like those ones which is okay just measure the pressure on, on each tires alert the driver if you have one default of pressure on one tires and of course set up an alarm in case of puncture which is in fact a very fast leakage in pressure in one tire you can imagine that the sensor, so you have a sensor here, is powered by a battery, a very small battery. And uh, the technology used, it's just standard SMD components, so fast mounted devices on a standard epoxy PCB, so very cheap uh, technology. Uh, this equipment is now compulsory in Europe, so every new car sold in Europe have this equipment now. Okay, uh, I have divided the presentation in four different points. The first one will talk about the Axiom simulation, which is a, a planar 3D simulation. Then we will talk about the circuit simulation. So uh, once we have a, a block which describes the PCB, we run a circuit simulation. After, I will show you a quick example on how we use the uh, Monte Carlo analysis in, uh, in AWR. And fi finally, I will show you a few, few things on the, on the use of analyst for our application. So this presentation will show you how we, the best way we found to use the software for our application. It is of course well open to discussion after uh, this presentation and uh, any question or comment uh, will be very welcome at the end. Okay. Let's talk about the Axiom 3D simulation. So the main purpose of the Axiom simulation for us is to generate a sub-circuit we can use in the circuit side simulation which take into account all the parasitic elements we could have in the PCB. That means track coupling with ground on the track length or every EM coupling between elements in the EM structure are taking into account in on the circuit side. So when we simulate the circuit with uh, the sub-block we can imagine we are close, very close to the reality. The second purpose is to show, to have a look to the, uh, the current inside the, uh, the EM structure. So here you have an example of, uh, of an annotation, which is the EM CKT current. It's a very handy thing in AWR, which is able, in fact, to link together the EM structure on the circuit. So that means the current shown here on the screen take into account the fact that, for example, at this port, which is the port number six, you have a capacitor connected. So the current shown on the screen are modified due to this impedance connected here. So that's very handy for us to just assess all the current everywhere in the PCB. So just Practically, how do we use Axiom? S so, of course, the AM structure we have are quite simple. So we import uh, the PCB in DXF format from the router. It works very well. 
And you just, if you set up correctly your EM mapping in Axiom, you just do it by one click and you have everything on your on EM structure. Uh, which port we are using uh, in Axiom? So the first port we are using our edge port to connect components to the M structure. So uh, it's uh, it's very easy to connect, uh, uh, for example, a capacitor or a inductor at, at a particular place on the board. We use it also to measure the voltage at particular points. The second port we are using are also uh, internal ports, which uh, are uh, handy to measure the current inside one particular track. So it's, for example, here. Okay. Uh, meshing, meshing in Axiom. The meshing in, in Axiom works quite well. The it's very, very good meshing. The only things we see sometimes it's the height aspect ratio, which occurs a few times. We think it's coming from a kind of compa compatibility of accuracy between software. So the only way we found to fix this issue is to take the EM structure, change the grid side down to something very small, like one micrometer or something very small, select all the elements in the EM structure, snap them to the grid, which of course modify a little bit your RM structure, but it won't impact your results at the end. And then go back to the uh, the machine, the machine. And every time the high aspect ratio issue just disappears. So very easy to fix for us now. So yeah, it's the quick discussion uh, machine. Uh. So once we have the, the sub-circuit for for the EM structure, we start the simulation on the circuit side. So th as I said before, all the, com all the components we are using in uh, for the matching are standard components, SMD inductors or capacitors. How do we use them in the circuit? So every components connected to the EM structure are, are, are described by uh, sub-circuits. Here you have an example of a sub-circuit. We have designed in all of our models just first of all to, to trust them and uh, also it's let us uh, ability to to play with the statistic uh, parameters and run a, mo a Monte, Carlo Monte Carlo analysis after when the design is close to be to be freed. So how do we optimize our uh, RF section? So the first thing we do is, of course, to set up appropriate measurements on a graph, which could be uh, as insertion loss, return loss, uh, current in particular place in, in, uh, of, the, of the RM structure or voltage. After we generate uh, a goal we want to reach, to achieve, and then we run the optimizer. So how do we optimize the RF? the RF matching. In fact, uh, as I said before, all the components are, are described by a sub-circuit. The optimizer is able to run the simulation by to run the on an optimization by swapping the component among a full library of components. How do we do that? In fact, we describe a vector here, which is actually the name of all the components available in the library. Here you have the vector for the inductors and you have the same vectors for the capacitors. Then every component are described by one element of this vector. For example, C2 here is the, num is the element number three of the vector capacitor. So it's actually one pick of error. And the optimizer is able to swap all the elements inside the library and try to reach the the goal we have set up. Okay, so it's, it's very, very handy things. W we can call it a swappable network. So that means you just swap every all the elements to reach the goal you want to achieve. And uh, the problem, oh, the problem, the thing is with this such a kind of of uh, optimization is that you cannot use all the methods inside the optimizer. On the only methods 
available with this kind of matching are discrete methods which are robust method, discrete local search method, and the two random methods which are local, uh, random local and random global. All the other methods, which are maybe 15 methods, are not available because it's a dis discrete, uh, discrete elements. So we have designed also another kind of model which, which is <laughs> a bit more complicated. Uh, it's a very small, uh <laughs> we won't see it, but just the principle is this model here is very similar to the previous one, except that you can r you can change continuously the value of the of the component. Here it's an uh, it's an example of uh, an inductor. So the value of the inductor is here. So it's a, a continuous variable, and all the parasitic elements of the components are described by equation inside the subsecret. So depending on the value of the uh, the, the components all other parasitic elements are calculated in those equations. So that allows us to use all the methods inside the um, AWR optimizer. We also use other features like par parameterized uh, modifiers. So we can maybe sometimes play a bit with the length of tracks and the distance uh, between tracks and ground to try to help for the matching of the RF section. So this is the way we we are using the optimizer. Uh, a big question we had in Sensata is, as there is 15 methods, is which method to choose when you have uh, uh, you want to reach some goals? Uh, it could be it's not obvious if you think uh, of the fact that you can have more than one goal, and goals can be very different. For example, you can have one goal to reach a particular return loss, particular uh, insertion loss, try to sometimes reduce the size of a PCB because you want to, to make it as smaller as possible. You can have goals like uh, improve the shielding somewhere on the, on the board. So all those goals, of course, are linked together, but uh, they are very different. So it's very difficult to say, OK, I will use this method because it's the best one. So what we have done in uh, Sensata is to to design a script in uh, in Visual Basic to control the optimizer. So how does it behave? So in fact, here you have. Uh, so when you start the, the the script, you see this uh, this windows. You have all the methods here. Okay, so you can enable the one you want to try. You also have the number of iteration. Uh, which are uh, in fact the, the number of uh, times you want to run the number of iteration per method. And there is a third number, which is, uh, we call it the efficiency evolution control, which is a percentage. So uh, how does it work? So in fact, it, it's a loop. So the, the software will run all the methods Y by one. So for example, here it will, it will run the pointer robust optimization for 1000 times. At the end of the optimization, if it sees the cost did didn't decrease, that means you didn't see any improvement. So the number of iteration will be decreased by 5%. If you have seen a uh, cost going down, that means you have seen an improvement and the number of iteration will be increased by 5%. So loop after loop, because uh, uh, the software will st will start the all the methods uh, every time, looped after loop, you will see that naturally the most appropriate method will have the highest number of iteration and the bad methods will go down to zero, quickly to zero, and will be disabled. So this is the way we found to, <laughs> to choose which method to use for a particular problem. So just give you a uh, here I will show you just a very small example on how we perform uh, a Monte Carlo analysis. It's based on a load pool. Just uh, quickly, the black cycle has a constant output power, 1 dB by 1 dB, and the highest power is at this point. The red curves are the current. So you see that uh, at high, high impedance, is your uh, lowest current, and the highest current is at this point. And uh, of course, the constant power added efficiency uh, five with 5% step. So, 
and the pink point is uh, where we we try to tune the, the impedance. So we connect this impedance to output power of our amplifier. Of course, we always try to be inside the best power added efficiency. So what's happen what's happening when we run a Monte Carlo analysis? You see that we have 2 dB of spread in terms of power. The current consumption shows two steps of spread. And it's quite high, not very high, but... And uh, so let me show you how we try to improve uh, a little bit the this uh, spread. So just by shifting a bit and try to tune it, shifting the, the impedance to the right, if I run uh, Monte Carlo analysis again, uh, so we, we see that we have 1.5 dB of loss. So this, this is uh, the loss we have. But we can see that we are still in, in the same area in terms of power added efficiency. But we can see that the spread is very small, below 1 dB. So it's very good for for the stability of the design, and also the current consumption, uh, as of course, has been reduced in the same time zone. Uh, the spread is a little bit improved, also it's one power four step compared to the two previously. So this is a way, just a very quick example on, on how we use uh, Monte Carlo analysis for our application. Now I will. Uh, Finally, show you a few things uh, on the analyst concerning our application. So the envir environment disturbance for us, you can imagine, is the rim. First of all, because our sensors are fitting on the rim, so it's attached to the valve. And uh, oh the rim is the most important thing for us. So here you have uh, just a picture of a screen copy of what we have done with the 3D editor, which is very easy to use on the no bug, no very perfect. Uh, so let me go, uh, sorry. So here it's a principle we use on TPMS. It's, it's not the case anymore, but it's a very old uh, principle. Uh, the principle is, in fact, um, to use the valve stem as an antenna. So I don't know if you recognize it's a valve of your car, so you would just inject the pressure when you want to inflate your tires. So it's you recognize it here. So the purpose is to send the RF energy into the stem and try to make it behave like an antenna. Uh, it's not... Uh, it's okay it's not bad at all uh, but the problem is it's very dependent on the rim shape that's the problem of this principle it works well but we have some problem from one rim to th to another one so here you have okay the meshing etc so what analyst is able to show us is the current rf current what's well, nice picture to look at but not really essen essential information for us. On the other hand, uh, the thing which is very important for us is, of course, the diagram plot. As you are maybe aware that on all cars, uh, wheels are rotating. So it's very useful for us to understand if there is null points where the energy is not transmitted. So it's very useful for us to 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 see such kind of uh, diagram plot. Uh, of course, you can imagine that the simulation on a full rim of a full, uh, a full wheel takes quite a lot of time and takes a lot of resources on the computer. So we prefer to simulate things with smaller smaller EM structure. Li here you have an example of a piece of rim we have designed in, uh, in the 3D simulator. So one feature which is very handy is that you can set up a parameter in the, in the 3D editor and use it in the RM structure. So example here you have the example of the angle which depicts the rim size. So you can adjust it. Yeah, you have 
10 de uh, 20 degrees, 30 degrees and 40 degrees. So it's very handy for us to just play with the RAM structure without going back to the 3D editor. So one of the thing we we use in for uh, with analysis is to to assess the coupling between components on the AM structure. So here you have a, an example of the distance bounds of these inductors on the current inside those tracks and uh, just a, f a few a few things. Uh, oh, so when it's finished, yeah. So thank you for your attention and uh, any question or com uh, comments will be very welcome. Thanks a lot.